Hello, uh, welcome. We're just going to wait one more minute before we begin our Power Up What Works webinar. We're just going to wait one more minute for others to sign on. Good evening. My name is Tracy Gray, and I'm the project director for the Power Up What Works project. We are so delighted to have you here this evening to discuss the whole issue of helping struggling students meet the English language arts common core state standards. And we're going to be focusing on the missing piece in that equation. I'm joined here tonight with my colleague Judy Zorfis, who's our principal investigator from EDC, and you're going to be hearing from Judy shortly. And I'm Tracy Gray from the American Institutes for Research here in Washington, D.C. So just a few housekeeping details. If you have a question or an issue, please feel free to type that issue in the right-hand corner box. We're very eager to hear from everyone and hope that you'll uh, give us your feedback as we go through our webinar and also that you'll take a few moments to fill in our survey at the end of our webinar. So why don't we begin today uh, with the goal for our discussion and what we're going to be doing is focusing on the question what is the missing piece to ensure that students with disabilities can successfully meet the common core standard Tracy hi this is Judy hi Judy uh, we're not seeing the PowerPoint did you want to make sure that was up Certainly. Uh, I believe uh, Elise is going to be showing us the PowerPoint. So we're watching you in your office and it um, looks great. So uh, as with technology, it appears that there's a slight lag in the PowerPoint. So now we see the question that we're going to be addressing today. And as I noted, the question is, what is the missing piece to ensure that students with disabilities can successfully meet the common core state standard? If you look at the literature and the information that's available on implementing the common core state standards, you'll find that there is an enormous amount 
of information out there, but there's really very little that's written about how to ensure that struggling students or students with disabilities can be successful in meeting these standards. So we're going to be taking a, uh, a few minutes today to walk you through the Power of What Works website. And what you'll find is there are an enormous amount of curated resources, information, and tools to help you as educators, whether you're a teacher or whether you are an administrator, a professional development facilitator, or a teacher educator. There's information that is research-based that can help you on Power Up. So why don't we go on to the next slide and what you'll see is there are three key elements to ensuring success when you talk about meeting the Common Core State Standards for students with disabilities. What you see here are evidence-based practices, technology, which can help you working with your students to differentiate instruction incorporating universal design for learning principles. All of these three elements work together to help students with disabilities succeed in their efforts to meet the Common Core standards. And again, as we walk through Power Up, what you'll see is we have an enormous amount of information that will help you to work with these students. So why don't we just take a minute to see the different kinds of resources that we have on our site. Power Up provides you with 17 instructional strategy guides. These offer ways to differentiate technology, differentiate instruction supported by technology. And tonight we're going to be focusing on the English language arts components of the Common Core. As you'll see, we also have information on integrating math with evidence-based practices. But again, tonight we're going to focus on the ELA component. You'll also see that we have a blog which has great suggestions with grab and go resources that can give you ideas on how to use technology. You'll find research related to technology and how these tools can be used in your classroom. You'll find a database with curated resources and up-to-date information on technology, practices, trends, and strategies. And you'll also find professional development support information whether you're doing self-directed learning or whether you're working with a coordinator for professional development. There are all kinds of pre-service and in-service materials. And lastly, you'll find detailed information about how to integrate technology district-wide and school-wide to know how to maximize your technology investment. So now, why don't we go over to Power Up What Works and take a quick tour of the website. And again, we encourage you to ask questions. Uh, we encourage you to give us your feedback. And uh, we'll be more than happy to address your questions as they come up on the little box in the right corner. So take it away. Thank you, Tracy. This is Judy, and I'll be doing the tour of the website. So I'm going to count on Elise for putting the website, making it visible, so that I could tell her where to go on the website. So I'm wondering if others might are seeing the website because I'm not seeing it up. Elise, I see you and I see Tracy's office, but I'm not seeing the website.
So I think Tracy mentioned that within Power Up, when we get there, you'll see that there are wonderful resources for a variety of audiences, for teachers, for those doing professional development, PD facilitators, for teacher educators, for school leaders, and for including principals. Um, so again, I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing a very little thumbnail. Uh, um, just checking, Elise, can you make that larger? OK, so Elise, how about going to the side that says um, learn, uh, power up uh, where you can learn about it? OK, would you go on that side? That's great. And this is just a little overview, a little way to get involved in what's our purpose of Power Up, who's our audience, and how we are focusing on pulling together um, information about technology, best practices, differentiating instruction, in order to help teachers, help students meet the Common Core State Standards. Let's go over to the other side of the website now. And we'll be moving quickly. And what we're hoping is that you'll be able to um, stop us, ask some questions. We'll be pausing in a way to do that. Because today is about English language arts, we're going to start by looking, going down the left navigation and looking at the materials for English language arts. When you do go to the website, you'll see that there's a tremendous amount of materials. And we'll be covering some of this today. At least if you scroll down, we want to just show that we have 10 different English language arts instructional strategy guides. And these instructional strategy guides are all research-based practices, and they are all aligned to the Common Core State Standards. For example, they're aligned in English language arts to inform reading informational text, reading literature, language, writing, foundational skills, fluency would align to foundational skills, word analysis, analysis to language, maybe self-questioning to informational skills. Tonight, we're going to use summarizing as a way to show what's included in an instructional strategy guide. I pick summarizing because it's very cross-cutting, goes across the grades, goes across content areas such as English language arts, science, social studies, and it cuts across grade areas from lower grades all the way up through the grades. Summarizing is a key skill. So let's dig into summarizing. And you'll see um, what you see here will be the same kind of content that you would find in any of our 10 uh, ELA strategy guides and any of our seven math strategy guides. At the top, and we'll start at the top tonight, although of course when you go to the website, you'll be able to move wherever you feel like it. So we'll start with the overview. And for every short overview, we have a slideshow. It's a really good way to get anchored to show, um, to just remind people of what's core about that strategy. So Elise, if you can just um, go through quickly, through a couple of slides, just to give our audience a flavor of the kinds of information that we include there. What we've done in updating our slides this year is that we've added questions. Questions that when you would stop and pause and say, I could use this as self-reflective questions, or I could use this if I'm meeting with my colleagues within a group or in a professional development environment. I think it's on slide seven that we have our first set of questions, at least. OK. Um, so we found that many people find this very helpful just to anchor themselves back with a strategy or when they're working with their colleagues. We think a lot of the power-up materials are really useful for individual work, self-guided ways of learning, as well as learning with colleagues in different settings. Let's scroll down a little more, Elise, 
and just check out which Common Core standards go along with this um, strategy of summarizing. Those are the ones we've picked out. There may be others. And you can see that we moved across different areas of English language arts. Well, the purpose of the instructional strategy guides is to help people think about good instructional strategies that use technology and that also can, be di that can help teachers differentiate instruction. All of this always comes back to making sure that students with disabilities succeed when it comes to meeting Common Core standards. Let's go to the, um, to the Teach with Tech section. What we've done in Teach with Tech is that we have included different instructional strategies. They're organized under different categories. They're very friendly. They're just ways to remember or to have access to new information about how you could improve instruction for students. Your eyes might be going to the right-hand column where we have additional resources and we have a blog and we have multimedia materials. Again, we, there's a lot that connects the different pieces of Power Up. Uh, Lisa, if you scroll down a little, there's a chart that we have there that's guidelines for creating a summary. And I'm pointing this out because a lot of people have found this helpful. And I'll be showing you how a teacher um, did find this helpful when she created a lesson. This is great. Let's keep going. And I just hope that even though we're giving you the, the speedy version of a tour about what's in Power Up, you'll be able to come back and really dig in on your own. Let's move down the choices of what's in the, the uh, instructional strategy guide to get to that lesson in action. So what we try to do is not only provide those instructional strategies, but also to have an image of what it might look like in a classroom. So let's go to the one on summarizing informational text, this one about Mrs. Bailey who is a sixth grade teacher. Um, I don't know if any of you out there are sixth grade teachers or uh, in the upper elementary or the middle schools. So let's look at Mrs. Bailey's lesson in action. If you could open that, Elise. Thank you. And what you'll see when Elise opens this, we have this as a PDF. And you'll see that there's a little context setting. There's a little sense at the beginning about her classroom, her students, where she is in her curriculum. Mrs. Bailey is always thinking about the Common Core. She's driven by that. It's part of the context of what's happening in her school. But she creates a lesson objective that connects what's happening in this lesson to the Common Core. Mrs. Bailey, if you scroll down a little, Elise, is thinking about how she can meet this lesson objective in terms of using different technology tools within her lesson connected to best instructional practices. And you can see here how she has selected different tools and why. Because she wants to know if her students are in fact meeting their objective, she's thinking ahead not only to starting the lesson, but how will she know if they've met some of those objectives. So she identifies some formative assessment strategies. Elise, if you scroll down, we'll show that we have a, a nice description of what's happening in Mrs. Bailey's class. What's happening before reading as she sets up the lesson. And in fact, one of the things she was showing on her whiteboard was this chart that the students helped her create of the do's and what to do and not do when you're creating a summary. She really drew upon those instructional strategies in the how to teach to kind of prompt and help her students create this chart. So you could read about how she sets up the lesson, how she does that preparation, the anticipation for the students, tapping into prior knowledge. And if you scroll down a little, Elise, we can see what the lesson looks like while the students are applying the skills of summarizing during the lesson. So if you scroll down a little more, 
you'll see that what she did during the lesson and then how she brings closure to the lesson at the end, what she does after the students are reading to make sure that they're coming back. When you read this lesson in action, you'll see ways in which she linked the technology to her best practices and how she, in fact, differentiated for students in terms of how she personalized their technology use, how she organized students to work in different collaborative ways. At the end, she reflects in terms of what worked and what could be strengthened in the future. So this is a very rich example that someone reading it alone could think about, as well as if you were um, working with colleagues in a team meeting, um, someone you're team teaching with, or maybe even if you're leading professional development, how you might use this and organize discussion around it, really elicit people to dig back into this story. Elise, I know people would probably really like to just linger and read this, but let's go on to the quick view. That was the next part. If you were going in a sequential way through our instructional strategy guide, we also have what we call quick views. So what is a quick view? A quick view is a short, maybe from three to maybe even eight minute little video little animated um, uh, video that explains some of the technology tools that were mentioned in the lesson in action, that were mentioned in the how to teach, or that were mentioned in our um, make tech happen. So let's just, um, we're not going to really show a, a much of the video, but let's just open one. This is about embedded supports. And this is Bailey was using embedded supports. This one's a little longer. We'll just show one or two, it's one or two, just maybe about 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute at least, okay? We're not hearing. Did you want to start it just for a moment? Okay, so we're not hearing the audio, but when you watch this at home, you will. <laughs> Okay. All right. So just to just to summarize so far where we are, when we opened up the instructional strategy guide, we had an overview. We saw a slideshow. We saw the uh, which common core standards aligned to this strategy. We looked at the strategies, some practices, some good teaching ideas in the Explore Teach with Tech. And then we looked at a classroom example, how we picked Mrs. Bailey and what she did when she was putting this together, the technology, the practice, and the differentiating instruction. And then we went a little further into the quick views. I'm going to pause right now and see if, as I was talking through the instructional strategy guides, if Tracy or any of our other colleagues noticed any questions that came up in chat um, that you'd like to bring up now just to make sure that we um, we address something that came up for you. Uh, certainly, Katie. Uh, how about uh, the issue related to uh, some of our resources? Uh, and there's interest in how teachers can use Wiki. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you noticed that because, in fact, Mrs. Uh, Bailey did use um, wikis. So Elise, if you could open the resources, if you can click over in the left navigation to the resources. And if you could do a search in the resources, you can type in wikis. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, and this is, if you scroll down a little, we have an article, we have different resources, we have where wikis we use in different instructional strategy guides. So there's always a way to search for some resources. Anything else, Tracy, that you think we should take a look at? Uh, yes, Judy. Uh, our questions come up uh, about differentiating instruction. Uh, this is an issue that we all know 
is of great interest to teachers and administrators. Absolutely, it is a great interest, especially because every child in the classroom has needs, has abilities, has strengths, and how does a teacher deal with all of that, and especially in today's context of meeting the common core. So within all of our instructional strategy guides, we always make sure that we are mentioning and showing ways to differentiate instruction. Um, the quick views also show how to differentiate instruction, and some of our blogs really focus on differentiating instruction. I'm also looking at here, up here, the right-hand box in orange that says teaching tip, and these interactives are also great ways to differentiate instruction. Elise, do you want to just open that up and we can look at those three tools for um, creating interactive resources? We all know that interactives are a great way to make sure that students stay engaged, that they're motivated, and that they're really in, um, working with the materials that teachers want them to use. I've heard a lot of teachers talk about voice thread, and if you remember, Mrs. Bailey was using that as well within her lesson to support students with a range of abilities and needs. Tracy, is there someplace else or on the website? you think we should go to or take a look at? I do. Uh, uh, Judy, I, I think it would be really of interest uh, to go to the professional development materials. Uh, as we talked about, individuals can take self-directed instruction and professional That's great. That is so great. So let's, let's, in fact, let's start with where we were in sum summarizing. I could see now Elise is one step ahead of me. And Elise, if we go down to the Find Professional Development Support Materials. So in each instructional strategy guide, there are some support materials that you could use by yourself, with a colleague, in a group. Let's look at what we have for summarizing, and we have the same three types of activities that go along with each one of our strategies. Let's open up summarizing. So in each one of our PD support materials, we always have uh, we have something for the slideshow, we have something for the teach with tech, and we have an activity that goes along with the lesson in action. So in terms of the slideshow, um, the way this is set up is the way you'll always see what was the goal, what uh, the material, the materials you would need, and what's an activity. So if you scroll down a little, Elise, what we've done is we mentioned that in each one of the slideshows, we've embedded questions. And here you can see the questions. Now, you might want to just think about those questions yourself as reflective questions. Or you might want to discuss it with somebody. Or you might want to send it as an email. Or you might want to use it as a Google chat. Or you might want to use it in other ways that you collaborate virtually or in person with your colleagues. Then we have directions and suggestions for using Teach with Tech. Again, we have what would be the goal in doing this. We have PD materials. I don't know if we have anyone today on the call who is a facilitator of professional development or a teacher educator. Um, I would imagine me thinking about how could I use this as I'm working with Power Up and the, and the teachers that I interact with. And the activity here, if you scroll down a little more, Elise, is a chart. And what we've done is we've listed all of the categories of our Teach with Tech and a shorthand of what that's, those strategies were. And then there's a blank column on the right that talks about differentiating instruction with technology. I've seen teachers sit together and say, if we were going to do this based on what we have in our school, based on what we have access to, based on a new idea that we just found in the blog on PowerUp, how could we use technology to differentiate these instructional strategies? And there's one more 
activity that we suggest. And this is a way to go back and take a really close look at the lesson in action. So Elise, if you could scroll down further, and we'll come down to what we call a scavenger hunt. The scavenger hunt has in it questions that would guide deeper exploration of the lesson in action. How did that lesson align to the Common Core? How did the teacher use any of the Teach with Text suggested practices? Where in this story was the teacher using technology to support struggling students? How did the teacher personalize instruction through differentiation? And in what ways did we see universal principles of universal des design for learning translated into action? Throughout our Teach with Tech, we always have links to UDL suggestions. If you scroll down just a drop more, Elise, it says, if you can't find a good example, maybe you can even improve upon what Mrs. Bailey was doing. What more could you have done, or would you have done, or what would you suggest to Mrs. Bailey if she was your colleague debriefing with you about her lesson? So we really hope that the lessons in action become a springboard for your own knowledge building, for your own reflection, and for collaborating and generating ideas with your colleagues. Elise, if we just go right back to the instructional strategy guide, there was one more part of it that I wanted to point out. And that was that in today's world, being research-based, having a research uh, article or a study that you can point to to explain why things are happening, why you're doing certain strategies within your classroom, we've included the research. Um, many um, administrators, teacher educators, PD um, facilitators and teachers have found that there's this comfort in knowing that the practices are based on the research. So if you scroll up just again, Elise, I want to take a little closer look at all of the rich resources that we have that were going down the right column. Because I just want to point out all the related pieces of information in addition to those core elements of an instructional strategy guide. We have related blog posts. which are updated frequently. So whenever you come back to Power Up, you're sure to find something new. They are very concrete. They give good ideas. They have great links. Um, let's do the, the value of the virtual field trip, Elise, just to give a little flavor of what would be in a blog. This was put up very recently. And you could see that we have links that we have an understanding of how you can use this. So it's very practical in terms of how you could take an idea and turn it into practice. You also see at the bottom that there was comments. And we are really encouraging people not only to come to the website, not only to use the website, but to comment and put in your own ideas so that we can create a vibrant community of power uppers. <laughs> Someone laughed when I used that term recently. OK, Elise, let's go back to that right column, because I just wanted to point out the other wonderful things there. So we have those related blog posts. Above that were our three interactive ideas, the tips. And then we had related resources. Um, as when we search for wikis, we could see that there was always a way to search for resources, but that, in addition, We've, in, we've uh, suggested those resources that are really, um, could be really helpful. Tracy, were there any other questions? Uh, sometimes once I get started, I get so excited about the website, it's hard to stop. But what else, what else came up? Absolutely, Judy. Uh, there was a question related to technology implementation and the types of resources to help guide school-wide technology implementation. How can teachers and administrators maximize their technology purchases? 
That's a great question. So it, it sends uh, Elise and myself over to this section, Make Tech Happen. Make Tech Happen really starts with a focus on technology, but we're never far from thinking about best practices, technology, differentiation. And you'll see that this section divides into in your classroom and in your school. I'm going to get to in your school in just a minute, but let's start with in your classroom because I want people to see what we have there. Elise, if you hit that, we'll see that in your classroom, we have a lot of information. And if you look down the net left navigation, you'll see, and if you just look like down the middle here, you'll see we have articles about captioning, about embedded supports, about supporting reading and social studies. The list is on the left, and it's also down the middle. Um, you want to open up uh, the supporting reading and social studies, Elise? Great. So if you went through this, you would see that we have an overview, how to use it in your classroom. And again, we always try and be have some good information, but thinking about the classroom. The bottom line is making sure students succeed. And in that using in your classroom, again, we would have that same uh, quick view. That's another way to get at it. Did you want to just hit that for a minute, Elise? So there it is. OK, great with more information about how you can use this in your classroom. OK, great. But Tracy did ask about implementation. So let's go back there. So in Make Tech Happen, we could be in your classroom or in your school. And in your school, we're thinking about what does it take to create a supportive environment across a school so that teachers have the support that they need, so that those people from technology, from curriculum, from special ed, from ELL, from, um, from assessment, that their voices come together and they're thinking school-wide, what does it take? So in order to support that, we've included a technology implementation practice guide. This implementation practice guide guides schools to think about who should be talking together. How do they think about their budget? How do they think about professional development? How do they think about providing teachers with the access to technology? How do they make the most of the technology that they have? How do they take into account current trends and how that's going to be effective within the context of their school. How are they gathering data to drive some of their decision making? So those key topics, those key issues that come up again and again when a school is thinking about technology implementation. We've offered research. We've offered recommendations. We've offered um, guiding questions and how you can actually address these kinds of core essential questions when it comes to technology implementation. So um, I've mentioned professional development. I showed you the professional development that was embedded in the instructional strategy guides, but we also have, look at that, we have a whole section on professional development as well. We have a facilitator's guide for any of those of you that are there that are leading, designing, conducting professional development, how you can introduce power up, how you can sustain use, how you could really help your teachers become um, in the habit of using power up so that it really guides what they do and it becomes a collaborative effort in their school. And we have support materials. If you wanted to share anything you've learned from this webinar, go take this flyer. Um, use it. Share it. Share these questions. Most frequently asked questions about Power Up. We even have an email template that you can send out to share information about Power Up and get others involved. So we've tried to really think ahead. Um, we all come from school environments. We know what it takes to create 
that unified vision of what we're doing and actually take the steps across the school and within classrooms as well. Tracy, I'm going to have to take a sip of water. Was there something else that came up? Sure, Judy. Uh, you're doing a great job here. Uh, one of the things that people have been wondering about uh, is more information on the, uh, the technology and uh, where, where is the information for how to integrate technology in your classroom in terms of resources and guidance for teachers. I think you'd mentioned something about these teaching tips and technology tips. Right, we were looking at that up in the top. We also have, we talked about the section Make Tech Happen. Uh, we have the related resources that go along with it. So embedded and woven throughout the site is information about technology in addition to this whole section um, that's called Make Tech Happen in Your Classroom with our technology research briefs. Uh, also, we're working uh, to integrate our tech matrix, which is going to be available directly from Power. Judy, do you want to just say something about the tech matrix? Absolutely. Um, Elise, did you want to go there as well? And Elise, you've been such a silent partner here. Perhaps you'd like to talk about the tech matrix too. This has been your third child. Uh, Lisa, do I want I, you want a chance to talk about the tech matrix? Elise is not really shy. Uh, she just had turned off a microphone. Okay, so uh, the tech matrix is um, a really terrific database that has come uh, evolved through the years from one project after another and it's now going to be um, it is a part going to be a, a major part of power up um, the wonderful thing about the tech matrix is that it allows you the user to search you can search by content area by grade level by IDEA category and by instructional support what we've tried to do is build in a way for you to not only see consumer guides, but to find what exactly what you're looking for. I see Elise is looking for reading. She's um, looking for intermediate grades. She's looking for children who have, um, what do you want, Elise? Intellectual disability? Okay. Um, and she's looking for instructional supports, what do you, and she's looking for products. Okay, so she's going to decide here that she would like multiple formats of text, thinking about ways to differentiate. And here she sees a listing of different ways, uh, different technology tools. Nice little brief explanation, tells you the cost, tells you it's, it, uh, what's good about it that could help you. I know people have used this to find free resources, um, and that's uh, free apps. Um, so we're constantly trying to update this to keep it um, a, aligned to our best practices and the kinds of materials that we're showing on Power Up, but also to know that people are looking for a variety of materials. So this will be soon accessible from different areas of Power Up as a really wonderful way to, f to access resources that can meet the, your needs in your classroom. Uh, Judy, could you just speak a little bit about customizing the information and materials on Power Up? How could I, as a teacher, cre uh, create my own uh, bucket of information that I can use in working with my students? Right, so you know that's really an, an interesting question, and the the important part about that is to think about make it um, make tech happen has a lot of good information, but to think about what is your starting point, and to pull out those pieces of information that really help you. Would you like to think think about certain instructional strategies from the make tech happen uh, from I'm sorry from the teach with tech. Would you then like to combine that with particular um, ideas from the 
uh, Make Tech Happen section. Would you like to connect that back with something from a blog? So in Power Up, because we have information about instructional strategies, because we have information about technology, because we have information about um, uh, um, differentiated instruction, you can create your own pathway to go through and to find that. You can bookmark different things, you can pull it out, you can make a list. Uh, we've looked at different technology tools so that you can create your own playlist. But you can create your own pathway based on the standards you're concerned about, the needs of your students, and where you can find the different information, but put it together in such a way that it makes sense for you and your students. Maybe you have younger students and you're interested in the creating a fluency log. Um, that's part of the foundational skills. So what we suggest is you think about, start out with going through the math and the English language arts instructional strategy guides and think about those strategies that might be powerful for your students. And then follow a route through the blogs and the resources and the Teach With Tech to create your own customized version of what from Power Up could work for you and your students. Tracy, do you want to add to that? Uh, I, th I think, Judy, that you've really uh, given a, a very solid overview of how teachers and other educators can use the resources. Uh, one of the things when you go into the site, as Judy noted, is that we've set up these documents so that you can cut and paste and customize the materials as you need them. Uh, in addition, our hope is that when you create your own materials, that you'll feel comfortable about sharing them with your colleagues and other teachers. Ultimately, our goal is that our power of community becomes a very active group of learners uh, who not only are doing self-directed professional development, but also having the opportunity to share with your school, to share across your district, and to share with others across the U.S. You know, Tracy, what I really like about, well, I like a lot about Power Up, but one of the things I really like about Power Up is that you could just you could just find something, and we're calling that like a grab and go resource. I am just, you know, it's it's you know the beginning of another week. I need something to really boost me. I could go to the teaching tip. I could go to the blog. I can find ways to just stimulate my ideas as a teacher, and something that I could bring back to my classroom. So I could just grab something from Power Up, or I have more time, and I could really dig into Power Up. I might want to look at the um, Teach with Tech and the lesson in action, and maybe next time I'll come back and start with the quick views. Or on another day, I need a little motivation myself, and maybe I'll just start with the quick views, and I'll go there, and then take myself back into the instructions um, with the uh, Teach with Tech. The thing that I like is that I could just get something I can have more sustained learning. I can come back again and again and think that I'm always going to find, be assured that I'm always going to find something new. So it could be a real companion for me, depending on what my needs as an educator are, and also being able to, to be able to refresh myself and learn by coming into Power Up. I'm really glad that you mentioned the collaboration because over time, Power Up will be adding more ways to collaborate, and we'll be taking advantage. We are taking advantage of a lot of social media tools so that we can create communities of people who are using Power Up, what we have here. They're using it as a springboard to new ideas, and they're engaging with others about sharing more and more ideas. So that's where the power comes from, what we have and people that are using Power Up. That's great, Judy. Uh, one additional issue that has come up uh, has to do with how we're going to be keeping the power of content fresh 
And if we're going to be adding additional uh, instructional strategies to the English language arts as we uh, go through the year. I'm really glad that you asked that. We're in the process of always updating um, our content. We ha will be having new lessons in action um, posted shortly. But we have the blogs that are always going to be um, updated. They're current updated. And our teaching tips are going to be updated. In addition, we'll be updating the tech matrix. So there's always new information there. And our resources are being updated as well. So there are ways that not only content, resources, blogs, uh, teaching tips, uh, tech matrix, all of those elements of Power Up will be updated. Plus, with ideas from the field, we'll be updating more. Uh, Judy, one of the issues that came up was related to assessment. Uh, will there be any type of uh, functionality related to assessments that teachers are going to be able to make to do quick formative assessments of their students. Yes, definitely. Well, you know that in each lesson in action, we always had as part of the context at the beginning what the teacher was doing for formative assessment. And also at the end of the lesson, we had our lesson to divide it into before during and after. And in the after part, here the teacher is going to be using audio recordings of repeated readings. This is influency. And um, I, I'm sorry, at least you went quickly, I didn't see the other one. But then after reading, it's, she comes back to be doing that. So in each one of our lessons in action. But I'm going to go beyond that, Tracy, because many people, teachers across the country, are using another website called Nutmeg that offers them ways to find assessments for their students. And Power Up will be visible on Nutmeg, where we will have assess assessments that go along with math, and they will focus on fractions. So that will be a connection to a way that people can really access, access assessment information. That's great, Judy. Uh, and in addition to having uh, assessments that teachers can make based on the needs of their students, uh, Nutmeg is also going to be offering this on the Power Up site. So as students take the assessment, it will also feature resources that teachers can use to help students improve their uh, studies. So, for example, uh, in the area of fractions, Power Up will offer an online assessment that a teacher can use. And the teacher will also, from Power Up, be able to identify specific questions that they'd like to include in an assessment. They can identify the students who should receive that assessment, and they can send it to that student for all of the students in their class. Students will be able to receive this assessment on a mobile device or to an email address. They can take the assessment, the results will be sent back to the teacher, and again the teacher will be able to identify specific resources and tools that they can suggest to the student to improve areas that they need remediation in. Um, in addition, we'll be expanding this functionality to include questions related to the Common Core State Standards and English Language Arts. Uh, so first we're going to be focusing on math, but soon, probably by mid-December, we'll also have this feature as it relates to the Common Core and ELA. So Tracy, that's terrific. Again, PowerUp keeps expanding, and uh, that's the beauty of developing a website as we're getting feedback from the field, as we're learning as the developers. It just gets better and better. Um, I want to turn it back to you because there was um, just a, one or two more slides that I think you wanted to show people. Um, so I know uh, we're counting on Elise to go back to that. Uh, thanks so much, Judy. Uh, we know that 
Uh, oftentimes it feels overwhelming when people are trying to walk you through a website, uh, particularly one like PowerUp that has so many rich resources and information and tools. So we just wanted to encourage you to visit PowerUp, uh, start with the Getting Started page, and that can lead you into the site so that you can identify those features that meet your immediate needs. And of course, as Judy noted, search the blog posts for new ideas on how to use PowerUp in your classroom. Uh, part of what we're doing with our blog features is looking at those new trends, whether it's the one-to-one -one initiative or bring your own device or all of the other trends, uh, flipped classrooms that make technology uh, ever vibrant, but also often a challenge for educators to be able to grasp not only what they're reading about in the newspaper or hearing about in the news, but also to get some concrete ideas about how they can make these best practices part of what, what teachers do, what you do in the classroom, and also what administrators and other educators are thinking about as they look at this issue of improving the technology infrastructure and technology offerings for their school. Uh, we encourage you to explore the instructional strategy guides. Uh, Judy gave you a quick overview. There's a wealth of research-based information there, both in ling English language arts and math. Of course, uh, you can do a quick overview with the quick views, uh, whether you're viewing this as an individual or as a group. On a Tuesday, when teachers get together, either formally or informally, uh, these quick views are great discussion starters and great ways to really focus on a particular topic so that teachers have the opportunity to share both their successes and their challenges. As we know, very often technology can be enormously frustrating. Uh, we had a little bit of that experience with the delays uh, with our uh, Google Hangout here. Uh, so it always underscores why teachers sometimes feel slightly reluctant to integrate a new technology in their instructional practices because you never know whether it's going to work as well as it is intended to work. Whether that has to do with slow internet connectivity or whether in fact the developer has overpromised. We also encourage you to take some time to go through that technology implementation practice guide. It's written for the end user in mind. Uh, what we've tried to do is boil the ocean related to all of the literature on best practices and technology implementation to really identify the key elements that our users will find helpful as you think about how to implement technology in, across the school and then to in, integrate technology tools and resources in the classroom. We encourage you to make power up a habit, uh, a habit for yourself, a go-to place where you can find those quick resources or if you have the time uh, to just delve down deeper to do a deep dive into a lot of the critical issues that are addressed on the site. Of course, tell others about PowerUp. Uh, we hope that you'll all serve as ambassadors and spread the word. And then join our collaborative discussions. As Judy noted several times, we really look forward to your input, your guidance, your suggestions. Let us know what's working for you. Uh, you can co communicate with us at PowerUp at AIR.org. And let us let your voice be heard uh, because PowerUp can only be strengthened by your input. So one more thing. 
Uh, we're going to be sending you just a quick survey that will be coming to you by email. Uh, if you could just take a moment to complete that survey and give us any feedback you might have, we would greatly appreciate it. So on that note, my thanks to Judy and Elise uh, who made this webinar possible and most importantly to our audience. Uh, we wish you all the luck as you work through Power Up What Works and in your efforts to meet the needs of struggling students and those with disabilities. Uh, take care and be safe out there. Good evening. Thank you.